Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn. We are continuing our conversation with Nate Hutchison. He and his wife, Whitney, stepped out in faith in 2007, went all the way across the world, took a big risk, and moved to New Zealand and helped plant a new church. Uh, they had raised, they had, they were pregnant when they left here and had their first child. They've had two others since then, but he is uh, back uh, just for a short period here in the United States. Uh, hasn't been back for the past, it's been over three years, so seeing both uh, grandparents and uh, seeing their siblings, just uh, having some good family time before they go back to start things in New Zealand. And so if you missed yesterday's program, just kind of hearing how God orchestrated their move and calling to go to New Zealand, uh, make sure you tune in. Uh, just go to our website. You can find that podcast and listen to it. It's only 14 minutes long. That is simply at hopeishere.today. That's hope is here dot today. Well, Nate, uh, you know, yesterday we talked about how God called you into it and started having your kids. But tell us a little bit what the worship's like. I mean, we know what it's like in the United States, and you came from a big uh, Christian church in Indianapolis. But uh, you do a church plant. Walk through us what the steps were like that. Did you have a building that you started out in, or did you guys uh, just just kind of share with us what that process was like when you started the church? Oh, man, the church in New Zealand is quite a bit smaller in general um, than it is in the States. So they're, on average, the size of a church is like 50 people. So that that was a big difference for us. We kind of went over there thinking, yeah, we could set up a church plant sign and, you know, like you do in some parts of America, and say, hey, come to, a, to church and maybe we'll have like 150 people the first Sunday. So that was a bit of a, a shock for us. So we had to kind of adjust our thinking about how it was going to go. Long-term relationship is really key for people in New Zealand. Um, so a lot of people are down on church, like they're very skeptical of church, skeptical of outsiders. So as Americans, we came in and we were just like really shocked kind of by, by people holding us at a distance. So we had to take time to uh, adjust to that and, and let people get to know us as people. And and once they did that, like, the doors opened slightly. Uh, but in general, kind of what's happened in New Zealand is since the 1960s, really, there was a Billy Graham crusade, and that kind of reawakened the church in New Zealand. The, the highest point of church attendance was, like, back in the 1800s, and that was when, like, 30% was attending church on a regular basis. Today, it's below 5% attending church on a regular basis. So there's a big challenge now to get people to rethink what church is. So that's kind of been our mission for the past 10 years. And uh, what happened with the Billy Graham Crusades is it did reawaken. It kind of sparked a new thing in Christianity. And some new churches were, were started, but when the Crusades left, like there was kind of a lot of new Christians and not a lot of leaders. So what that did was kind of polarized the churches because there wasn't a whole lot of solid biblical leadership. Uh, it went to the extremes. So there are a whole lot of really traditional, like High Church of England, Anglican-type churches. And then on the other end of the spectrum, there's more like super Pentecostal churches. And so nothing that kind of fits that middle ground where people can explore and feel safe and feel relevant to their lives. So we're trying to plant churches that that are just solid, biblical, Jesus-centered churches that meet people where they are, that help people to see this is not just something for my grandma. It can be fun. It can be, there can be some humor. We think about where we plant our churches. So location is a big key. We try to go to the people we planted our first church in a pub, and then we moved up to a movie theater after that. So that's kind of the, the ethos behind why we're there. So we're trying to open their eyes to, now church is actually relevant for you. It's not just for your grandma. It's not just for weird or scary people. It's for, for everyday people, and Jesus can make a difference in your life. There's life-changing power in the name of Jesus. Well, that statistic you just shared with us, that 5% or less 
go to church on Sunday mornings. So I guess the question I would ask you, I mean, were people even really familiar if you talked about a church, what that was? or? Well, yeah, the, there, there are people who, like we did some interviews on the streets uh, when we were first there, just trying to get a picture of what people were thinking about church. And we found some people that said they're Christians. We were like, oh, sweet. And we said, where do you go to church? And they're like, oh, we don't go to church. We're Christians, but, well, I, you know, actually I've, I've been to church like on Christmas and Easter, but we don't really attend otherwise. So it's kind of like a, yeah, my grandma was a Christian, so that makes me a Christian, not a personal thing for them. So there's a, a challenge to get them to actually realize that that the gospel is, meant to permeate your whole life like it is it's not just something that you tack on especially not at just christmas or easter the gospel is an everyday thing gospel changes everything so we're trying to yes just combat that philosophy of just saying yeah christianity but no it's a lifetime thing just tuned in, we're talking with Nate Hutchison. He and his wife, Whitney, planted a church back in 2008 in New Zealand. And if you'd like to find out more information about that, you can look online. It is at churchplant.nz, churchplant.nz, obviously NZ, initials for New Zealand, to find out what uh, God's doing over there with Nate and Whitney and their church. And uh, one of the things, uh, Nate, I want to ask you about is I would think, and maybe I'm wrong, but, uh, you know, the United States is very multicultural now. Is, is, is that true also in these, in New Zealand? Oh man, that's a really exciting thing is happening in New Zealand right now, uh, as a church planter's perspective. And that is people from all over the world, uh, have been for a long time moving to, uh, especially the city of Auckland, New Zealand, um, 75,000 new people enter this small country. I mean, the population is the size of Kentucky. It's about 4 million. Um, but but 75,000 new people are entering the country from places that are in that 1040 window, the unreached people groups, places, you know, like in China or India or Middle East. People are coming in to Auckland, New Zealand, and they're moving into this really specific area of Auckland where we're planting a church in the Northwest. Um, so it's it's now the most, or it's now more diverse than London in this city of about two million um, as far as people groups. So we're just excited that, that God's put us there and given us a vision for this particular area and a place to plant a church, and we're hopeful that people will come from all over the world hear the gospel in New Zealand, and then be sent back home to places that are unreached with the gospel. Well, that's really cool to hear that. I was going to ask you a question. So population base similar to the state of Kentucky, about 4 million. Uh, what's the time difference between Lexington, uh, Eastern Time Zone, and you all? How many hours ahead or behind are you all uh, compared to us? Yeah, we're ahead. So usually, depending on time change or daylight savings is 16 to 18 hours ahead and my dad always asks me to to tell him the score of the games that he's watching because i'm ahead i'm like that doesn't work that way because <laughs> <it's actually, laughs> like who wins this game yeah uh, <laughs> we'd be rich if we did if we could do it that way. absolutely you, you can pay for lots of church plants if uh you can do that so that's right what uh what was you know obviously you go in i know you got your eyes wide open and things what were maybe some of the couple of things that you weren't expecting maybe that were challenges when you first started doing the church plant mm. well probably the most consistent thing in our in our journey in New Zealand has been this idea of challenge and trial and and all the whole time I was thinking man god why why like every time like uh, we had earthquakes or you know, conflict on our team or things that were just harder than we expected, I would, we'd be praying, God, take this away, take this away. But really what we should have been praying was, God, use us, shape us, mold us. Thank you for the trials. Because, man, looking back over the 10 years, I am such a different person because of those trials. 
um, than than I would have been if they if everything had been smooth. So to answer your question, probably the most trial, the most um, difficult time would have been in Christchurch when we had we had just moved into a new city. So there's transition stress. We're moving, so that's kind of moving house. That's a big stressor. Then we we're learning the new culture. We're, we're planting a church, which is a high stress situation. Earthquakes come, and I'm talking like ten to twelve thousand aftershocks happened over the course of two to three years, and a lot of those you could feel, and you know you never know if those are getting bigger and was going to be a big one. Um, then having also having three kids you know, over some years in there, there was just such a trial, man. And it was like so much stress, but we used that. And my wife and I love to tell people we got a counselor to help us work through that stuff and work through our relationship through all that. And that was the best thing we could have done because she opened our eyes. She's a Christian counselor. She opened our eyes to the ways we were being the ways other people were affecting us, and man, I'm I'm just so pro counseling. Like I've actually gotten a, a little diploma in counseling, so I can be a better pastor to others. And that was uh, such a good moment for us when that happened for us. Seeing a counselor, yeah. Well, I want to affirm you for saying that because I think that, especially for us men, that a lot of times, you know, we just got to tough it out or, you know, we don't need anybody to tell us how to solve our problems. But I know there's people listening here today here in the States who have access to lots of counseling, but do want to uh, preface that with make sure it's Christian counseling, uh, biblically based counseling. But I know at least in my life, I know some of the best money I've spent, Nate, is on Christian counseling and not ashamed to admit that. And I even go in uh, two or three times a year for some kind of like oil changes with my car just to kind of get some soul tune-ups myself and keep my soul clean and healthy. But, uh, you know, the Bible talks about what's done in the darkness, you know, will be brought to light and there's healing when it comes in the light. And I don't know about you, but to me, one of Satan's greatest lies is that, you know, you can't tell anybody else that you're struggling, especially if you're a pastor. And we've only got about a minute and a half left here. But uh, have you found that to be true, too, especially with men that, you know, we don't feel like we can talk about our problems? But man, once we do, there's tremendous freedom. And you also find out that, oh, yeah, I struggle with that, too. Yeah, yeah. Talking about it is such a good idea. It's never a bad thing to say, hey, this is what I'm struggling in, in confidence. I mean, maybe not get up in front of everyone and say, hey, everybody, this is what I'm, you know, depending on what it is. But find someone that you trust and just open up. And, in that, and you might find people say, man, I'm struggling with that, too. And you might find that that actually is what helps you uh, conquer those giants in your life with the help of the Holy Spirit. Um, and just to to admit to yourself, to God, to tell Him that hey, I'm sorry. This is what's what's, what's happening with me. Help me. Um, and then with other people, that's uh, definitely a biblical precedent that we somehow we miss that a lot of times as Christians. Well, I can't believe it. we're out of time already, but Nate's going to stay with us for one more program. So I hope that you tune in with us tomorrow because we're going to talk more just a little bit about what the church service is like, more about the country, New Zealand, what's some of the best foods, is UK basketball as popular as it is there, uh, as it is here, I'm sorry, in Lexington, and that and much more with Nate Hutchinson. He and his wife, Whitney, are doing a church plant in New Zealand. And uh, if you'd like to find out more about that, you can look online at Church Plants. Dot NZ. That's churchplants.nz. I'm Greg Horn. We'll see you tomorrow on Hope Is Here. Kevin Bradley is the number one REMAX real estate agent in the state of Kentucky, and he lives right here in Scott County. Having sold over 200 homes in 2017, Kevin would welcome the opportunity to help you buy or sell your home or answer any real estate questions that you have. Kevin is a proud supporter of Georgetown College men's and women's basketball. Contact Kevin Bradley today at 859-619-9896. That's 859-619-9896 with REMAX Creative Realty.